Despite our general belief that athletes are flawless, there's a hidden truth that we must confront. Some of the greatest footballers of all time have struggled with a dark and destructive force, alcoholism. Join us as we explore the shocking stories of the 10 worst alcoholic footballers in world history. Let's see who takes the top spot. Milevsky, Number 10. Artem Milevsky Artem Volodymyrovich Milevsky was born on January 12, 1985. His early football career showed immense promise as he started as a youth striker for the Belarusian club Smena Minsk. In August 2006, he gained widespread recognition when he was voted the best footballer in Ukraine by journalists. However, despite his undeniable talent on the field, Malevsky's off-field behavior raised eyebrows. Throughout his career, he became infamous for his involvement in numerous drug, racing, and drinking scandals, creating a cloud of controversy that followed him from his time at Dinamo Kiev FC to his stint at the obscure Turkish club Gaziantepspor and later a relatively unknown Belarusian club. Number 9. Ladislaw Kubala A name etched in football history as one of the sport's greats had his own battle with alcoholism. Born on June 10, 1927 in Budapest, Hungary, Kubala hailed from a humble background. His parents worked hard to make ends meet, with his mother laboring in a factory and his father toiling as a bricklayer. In 1949, as Hungary transformed into a socialist state, Kubala made a daring escape from his homeland. Leaving everything behind, he embarked on a treacherous journey, fleeing in the back of a truck to find a new life. Fate intervened guiding him to Barcelona. Interestingly, he was initially meant to play for Real Madrid, but FC Barcelona officials managed to intercept him at the airport before their rivals could secure him. However, Kubala's arrival in Barcelona was anything but conventional. In a twist of events, he found out the next day that he had signed for FC Barcelona, completely unaware of the details when he inked the contract due to being under the influence of alcohol. Nonetheless, Kubala would go on to become the first legendary player to shape the history of FC Barcelona, ushering in a golden age for the club. Number 8. Diego Armando Maradona A name synonymous with football greats and controversy remains one of the most iconic and polarizing figures in the sport's history. While he gained worldwide recognition for his incredible skills on the field, he also made headlines for his struggles with addiction. Born on October 30, 1960 to a poor family, Maradona's journey from the streets of Argentina to football stardom is the stuff of legends. At the tender age of eight, a teen-eyed talent scout spotted him playing in his neighborhood, marking the beginning of his illustrious professional career. However, fame and fortune came with a darker side as Maradona's ascent was marred by the use of cocaine and alcohol, starting in the mid-1980s and continuing until 2004. During his time at Barcelona, his drug usage began, and things escalated when he moved to Napoli, where his connections with the Mafia deepened his addiction woes. The toll of his substance abuse was evident as he struggled with weight gain, leading to his transfer to a psychiatric clinic specializing in alcohol-related problems. In May 2007, Maradona made a public confession on Argentinian national television, declaring that he had quit drinking and had not used drugs for two and a half years. Despite being hailed as one of the best footballers ever, Maradona's reputation became intertwined with his battles against cocaine and alcohol, overshadowing his incredible talents on the pitch. In his biography, he candidly admitted that his drinking habits affected his performance, and he believed he could have achieved even greater heights had he not indulged in excessive whiskey consumption. Unfortunately, the golden boy's life was marred by vices, and he lived life to the extreme until the very end. In November of last year, the world mourned the loss of the football legend. While no opiates were found in his body at the time of his passing, his struggles with addiction have left a lasting impact on his legacy. Number 7. Tony Adams Born on October 10, 1966, he left a lasting impression on the football world as a dedicated player for Arsenal and the England national team. Playing as a centre-back for almost 22 years at Arsenal, Adams became an icon adored by fans. 
His contributions to the club were so significant that a statue in his honor was dedicated at the Emirates Stadium on December 9, 2011, alongside statues of Thierry Henry and Herbert Chapman. However, behind the glitz of his football career, Adams battled a fierce and damaging addiction to alcohol that began in the mid-80s. Reports of alcohol-fueled fights in nightclubs began to surface, signaling a troubled path ahead. The turning point came on May 6, 1990 when Adams was involved in a serious car crash. A blood test revealed that the level of alcohol in his system was more than four times the legal drink-drive limit. As a consequence, he was sentenced to four months in prison for drunken driving. Despite the setbacks, Adams took charge of his life and embarked on a journey of self-improvement. Six years later, under the guidance of Arsenal manager Arsene Wenger, the club's practices and members' diets underwent a transformation. This reformation also extended to Adams' lifestyle, leading to significant positive changes. In the year 2000, Adams, having struggled with alcoholism and drug addiction, made a pivotal decision that would change the lives of countless athletes. He founded the Sporting Chance Clinic, a place dedicated to helping sportsmen and women battling drinking, drug, or gambling addictions. Through this foundation, Adams sought to use his experiences to support others on their journey to recovery. Number 6. Adriano Adriano Leto Ribeiro, widely known as Adriano, emerged as a promising football talent born on February 17, 1982. His professional journey began in 1999 when he joined Flamengo's youth squad, quickly rising to the senior squad just one year later. A powerful striker, he earned recognition as one of the best in the world during the mid-2000s. At the young age of 18, he became a key member of the Brazil national team, touted as the long-term successor to the legendary Ronaldo. However, despite the glory of his footballing career, Adriano battled a myriad of personal demons. In a candid interview with Brazilian magazine R7 via Football Italia, he bravely admitted to suffering from depression and alcohol-related issues. The void left by the death of his father plunged him into a deep loneliness and sadness. Isolation in Italy, combined with the influence of negative company, led him to rely on alcohol as an escape. Adriano found temporary happiness in drinking, indulging in various types of alcoholic beverages, including wine, whiskey, vodka, and beer lots of beer. Despite his great performances for renowned clubs like Inter Milan and Parma, Adriano's personal struggles began to overshadow his brilliance on the field. Nightlife's glamour proved too enticing, and the trappings of fame, wealth, and power further fueled his downward spiral. The once powerful striker heralded as the future of Brazilian football found himself unable to realize his full potential. Eventually, Adriano returned to Brazil, but his once brilliant career had lost its luster. The journey that was meant to catapult him to the top of football's elite ended in disappointment. The tale of Adriano serves as a poignant reminder of the destructive forces that can encircle even the most gifted athletes, robbing them of the chance to fulfill their potential. Number 5. Roman Shirikov Roman Nikolaevich Shirokov, born on July 6, 1981, carved out a career in football that was overshadowed by his struggles with alcohol. Starting his journey at the CSKA Academy, Shirokov faced challenges due to his poor attitude, which affected his prospects as a rising football talent. Despite the hurdles, he began his professional career with Zenit, initially playing as a central back before moving on to other football teams. Hailing from Russia, Shirokov found himself on the list of drunk footballers, a disheartening but not uncommon occurrence. He became a representative of Russian football on the wrong side of the spectrum, battling alcohol-related issues that impacted his professional and personal life. Croatian newspaper Sportske Novosti labeled him as the main alcoholic in modern football shedding light on the extent of his struggles. Roman himself confessed that he prioritized drinking bouts with his companions over developing his football skills. He candidly revealed that his excessive consumption of vodka and whiskey had placed him in serious jeopardy, prompting a realization that he didn't want to succumb to an early demise. The disappointment he faced after leaving CSKA coupled with the allure of alcohol led him down a troubling path. He recounted spending two months wandering the country, immersed in alcohol-fueled escapades, unable to recall most of those dark moments. 
In a candid interview with Sport Express, he lamented that his battles with alcohol had cost him four precious years of his life. However, Roman Shirokov's story took a turn for the better when, at the age of 26, he decided to reclaim control of his life. He gathered the strength to overcome his addiction and returned to the football pitch with renewed determination. Shirokov went on to become a significant soccer player for the Russian national team. Number 4. Socrates Born in Belém do Pará, Brazil, Socrates began his professional football career in 1974 and became synonymous with Corinthians, where he spent the majority of his illustrious career. Captaining the national team at the 1982 FIFA World Cup, he showcased his footballing prowess and scored an impressive 22 goals during his time with the Brazilian national team. But Socrates was not just a football player, he was a multifaceted individual. Alongside his sporting achievements, he was a respected columnist, contributing to various newspapers and magazines, not just on sports but also covering politics and economics. He graced Brazilian TV programs as a football pundit, captivating audiences with his insights. Adding another layer to his remarkable life, Socrates was also a physician. He held a bachelor's degree in medicine from the Facultade de Medicina de Ribeiro Preto affiliated with the University of Sao Paulo. Despite his academic pursuits and professional accomplishments, he was candid about his struggles with alcohol. While Socrates may not have been dependent on drugs, alcohol had a profound impact on him. It led to health issues including liver and intestinal problems that resulted in hospitalization. Despite not being addicted, the destructive effects of alcohol ultimately caught up with him. In a bid to combat his health complications, Socrates underwent a liver transplant in 2011. However, even this drastic measure could not salvage his deteriorating condition, as the consequences of alcohol abuse had taken their toll. Despite his brilliance as a player and his achievements on and off the field, Socrates' life was tragically marred by alcohol. As a professional physician, he was well aware of the dangers posed by excessive drinking. He was known as an elegant, technically gifted playmaker who could play great through balls to the waiting strikers. Number 3. Paul John Gascoigne Born on May 27, 1967 in Gateshead, Paul John Gascoigne, affectionately known as Gaza, was hailed as one of the most naturally talented English footballers of his generation. His prowess on the field earned him a well-deserved reputation as one of soccer's greatest talents, captivating audiences with his skills and flair. However, behind the glimmer of fame and success, Gaza struggled with a dark side marked by addiction and mental health challenges. Included among the drunk football players of all time, Gascoigne's battle with alcohol was a well-documented part of his tumultuous life. Diagnosed with bipolar disorder, he grappled with mental health issues that further complicated his journey. Unfortunately, his struggles with addiction and self-destructive behavior overshadowed his exceptional talent, leaving a trail of controversies in his wake. In October 2010, Gascoigne faced legal trouble after being arrested for drunk driving, revealing that he was more than four times over the legal alcohol limit. Shortly after that incident, he faced another arrest, this time for possession of cocaine, further fueling concerns about his well-being. His encounters with alcohol-fueled incidents extended beyond run-ins with the law. At one point, he found himself hospitalized following a drunken altercation in a hotel. Such episodes highlighted the depths to which addiction had taken him. Despite the brilliance he showcased on the field in the late 80s and early 90s, Gaza's personal struggles with vices, especially alcohol, cast a shadow over his otherwise illustrious career. His struggles with food, gambling, drugs, and alcohol led to numerous incidents, painting a picture of a man grappling with his inner demons. The roller coaster of Gaza's life included moments of despair, as he even attempted to take his own life emphasizing the toll that addiction can take on an individual's mental health. In 2017, Gasset took a significant step towards returning his life around by entering a rehabilitation center, signifying a genuine effort to break free from the clutches of alcohol. Number 2. George Best In case you didn't know, he was born on May 20, 1946 in Belfast, Northern Ireland and is often hailed as one of Britain's most naturally talented footballers. His talent was evident from a young age, and when Manchester United scout Bob Bishop discovered him, he famously exclaimed to Matt Busby, Boss, I think I found you a genius. 
As Best's football career flourished, he not only made headlines on the pitch but also became an iconic figure of the swinging London era during the 1960s, known for his fashionable style and charisma. He played as a winger and received numerous accolades, including being named European Footballer of the Year in 1968 and ranking sixth in the FIFA Player of the Century vote. Despite his exceptional talent, Best battled a fatal habit that would haunt him throughout his adult life alcoholism. His addiction to alcohol led to numerous personal and legal troubles, overshadowing his footballing achievements. In 1981, while playing in the United States, Best committed theft, stealing money from an unknown woman's handbag to fund his drinking session. His run-ins with the law didn't end there, as he faced charges of drunk driving, assaulting a police officer, and failing to answer bail resulting in a three-month prison sentence with Christmas 1984 spent behind bars. His addiction took a toll on his health, and by March 2000, his liver function had deteriorated to a mere 20%, necessitating a life-saving liver transplant. Despite the transplant, Best continued to struggle with alcohol, unable to break free from its grip. In the early hours of November 25, 2005, at the age of 59, George Best tragically passed away due to a lung infection and multiple organ failure. The consequences of his long battle with alcohol and its toll on his health had finally taken their toll. Best's brilliance on the field at Manchester United, where he helped the club win the European Cup in 1968, was matched only by his insatiable appetite for alcohol and the nightlife of Manchester. His reputation as a rock star, driven by his cravings for alcohol and women, painted a picture of a man living life to the extreme. Number 1. Garincha Manuel Francisco dos Santos, better known as Garincha, remains an unforgettable figure in the world of football. A flawed genius, he was born in 1933 in Pau Grande, a district of Mache in the state of Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, into a life of poverty and hardship. Garincha's physical condition was far from normal. He had his right leg six centimeters shorter than his left, and his left leg turned outward while his right turned inward. Doctors believed he might never walk properly. Growing up smaller than the other kids, he earned the nickname Garincha, the northeastern name for the wren, a tiny brown bird. Illiterate and uninterested in football initially, nobody anticipated that he would rise to become one of the greatest footballers in history. Despite his physical disabilities, Carincha defied the odds and displayed unmatched talent on the football field. In Brazil, he's often regarded as one of the greatest footballers ever, even before his compatriot Pelé. He was an essential part of the Brazilian national team that won the World Cup in 1958 and 1962. While his football career soared, his private life was plagued by recklessness and self-destructive behavior. He developed a penchant for alcohol, following in the footsteps of his alcoholic father. Garincha's life became a chaotic mix of women and alcohol, overshadowing his footballing brilliance. Throughout his life, he was involved in numerous drunken car crashes, showcasing the destructive power of addiction. His personal life was marked by womanizing, and he left behind 14 children a testament to his tumultuous relationships. Sadly, the man who was celebrated for his footballing prowess met a tragic end. Alcohol eventually took its toll and Garincha succumbed to liver disease in 1983 while in an alcoholic coma. His untimely death left a void in the hearts of football fans around the world. Don't forget to hit the like button and share this journey with your fellow football fans. Check out our channel for more fascinating content. Thank you for watching and until next time, stay tuned!